If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it. That surfeit in the appetite may sicken and so die. Yes, that, that strain again. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough, no more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. O oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding thy capacity, receive it as the sea not enters there, of what validity and pit soever, but falls into abatement and low price, even in a minute so full of shapes is fancy, that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunting, my lord? What, Curio? The heart. Why, so I do, the noblest that I have. When mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires like fell in cruel hounds ever since pursue me. How now, what news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her handmaid do return this answer. The element itself till seven years' heat shall not behold her face with ample view, but like a cloistress she will veiled walk, and once a day water her chamber round with eye offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she that hath a heart of that fine frame, to pay this debt of love but to a brother, how will she love? When the rich golden shaft had killed a flock of all affections else that live in her, when live a brain and heart, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled. Her sweet perfections with one self king. Away before me to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. What country, friends, is this? This is Illyria, lady. And what shall I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he's not drowned. What think you, sailor? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother. True, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself. After our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you, hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother most provident in peril bind himself, courage and hope both teaching him the practice, to a strong mass that lived up on the sea, where, like Arion on the dolphin's back, I saw your brother hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. For saying so, there's gold. My known escape unfolded to my hope, whereto thy sweet serves for authority, the like of him. Knowest thou this country? Aye, madam, well, for I was bred and born but three hours' travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke in nature as in name. What's his name? Orsino. Orsino. I've heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And is now, or was so late. For about a month ago I went from hence, and then, twas fresh and murmur, as you know what great ones do, the less will prattle of, that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, for whose dear love, they say, she hath abjured the sight and company of men. Oh, that I serve that lady, and might not be delivered to the world till I had made mine own occasion mellow what my estate is. That were hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the Duke's. There is fair behavior in thee, Captain, and though that nature with a beauteous wall doth off close in pollution, yet of thee will I believe thou hast a mind that suits with this thy fair and outward character. I pray thee and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am and be my aid, for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. You shall present me as a eunuch to him. It may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music 
God will allow me very worth his service. Whatever else may happen, to time I will commit. Only share thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let mine eyes not see. I thank thee. Lead me on. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus? I'm sure there is an enemy to life. By my throat, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier o' nights. My lady, your cousin, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. Well, let her accept before accepted. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes be good enough for drinking, and so too be these boots. And they be not, let them hang in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday, and of a foolish night that you brought here one night to be her wooer. Who, oh, Sir Andrew Ague Chief? Aye, he. Why, he's as tall a man as any in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? He has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Fie, that you'll say so. He plays on the viol de gamboys and knows three or four languages, word for word without book, and at all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed, almost natural, for besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler, and that he had the gift of a coward to allay the gust he had in quarreling, this thought among the prudent, he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand, there are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They who add. Moreover, he is drunk nightly in your company. In drinking helps to my niece. I drink to my niece as long as there's a passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece till his brain turn out a toe like a parish top. Yes. What is it? tell me, bitch. Cassidy and the Volgo, here comes Andrew Aguface. Hmm. How now, Sir Toby Belch? <laughs> Sweet Sir Andrew. <laughs> oh, bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? That's my niece's chambermaid. Oh, dear Mrs. A cost. I desire about your acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Oh, dear Mistress Mary, of course. I. D you mistake, Knight. To a cause is to front her, to board her, to woo her, assail her. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cause? Fare you well, gentlemen. And thou let part so, Sir Andrew. What's done might never draw a sword again. Uh, and you part so, Mistress. I would, I might never draw a sword again. Dear fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by thy hand. <laughs> <laughs> Marry, but you shall. Here's my hand. Now, sir, taunt is free. I pray you, bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Uh, wherefore, sweetheart? I mean, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Oh, I, I think so. I'm not such an ass, but I could keep my hands dry. What's your jest? A dry jest, sir. <laughs> Are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my fingers' end. Mary, now let go of your hand. I am barren. <laughs> oh, night when thou needst a copper canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think. Unless oh, you see canary put me down. <laughs> Me think sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or ordinary man has. I'm a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. Oh, no question. I thought that. I'd forswear it. I'd ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. But pourquoi dear night? Pourquoi? What's that? Do or not do? I would have had bestowed the time in the tongues that I have with fencing, dancing, and bear baiting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. Then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair. Why? Would I have mended my hair? Past question. For to see, it does not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. 
It hangs like flax on a distaff. And I hope someday a housewife will take me between the legs and spin it out. Oh, by faith. At home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. And if she be, four to one, she'll none of me. The count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of the count either. She'll not match above her degree either in estate years no wit. I've heard her swear at this life to it, man. Well, I'll stay a month longer then. I'm a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revel sometimes altogether. <laughs> ah, how well, good are you at these kickshawsies, knight? More than any man in the area. Whatsoever he be, and only the degree of my betters. And yet still, I will not be compared to an old man. <laughs> what is thy excellence in a galliard? Why, I could cut a caper. <laughs> and I could cut the mutton to it. And I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in the area. Oh, wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore have they a curtain before them? Or are they like to take dust like Miss Maul's picture? Why dost thou not... Go to church in a galliard and come home in a caranto. My very walk should be a jig. <laughs> I would not so much as make waters in a syncopace. What dost thou mean? Is this a world in which to hide virtues? I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg that it was formed on the star of galliard. Aye, this strong. And it does it different well in a dun-colored stock. Mm. Well, shall we set about some revels? What else shall we do? Were we not born under Taurus? Oh, Taurus? Why, that's sides and heart. No, legs and ties. <laughs> now let me see the caper. Ha-ha, 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 ha-ha. If the Duke continue these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence that you call into question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? No, believe me. I thank thee. Here comes the Count. You saw Cesario, ho? Huh? On your attendance, my lord, here. Stand you while you live. Cesario, thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow until thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, but if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she will never admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord, what then? Then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than in enuncios of more grave aspect. I think not so, my Dear lord. Do not believe it. For there shall yet be lie thy happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all is semblative of a woman's part. I know thy constellation is right up for this affair. Some four or five attend him, all if you will. For I myself am best when least in company. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. Yet another barful strife. Whoever I woo, myself would be his wife. Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs to fear no colors. Make that good. He shall see none to fear. A good Lenten answer. I can tell thee where that thing was born of, I fear no colors. Where, good Mistress Mary? In the wars. Ah. And that may you be so bold to say it in your foolery. Well, God give them wisdom that have it, and for those that are fools, let them use their talents. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away, is that not as good as hanging to you? Many 
a good hanging prevents a bad marriage, and for turning away, let summer bear it out. You are resolute then. Not so neither, but I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other will hold, or if both break, your gaskins fall. Apt, in good faith, very apt. Well, go thy way then. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Peace, you roll, no more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely, you were best. Wit, and be thy will, put me into good fooling. Those wits that think they have thee very oft prove fools, and I that am sure I lack thee may pass for a wise man. For what says Quinnipus? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellow? Take away the lady. Oh, go to. You're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna. The drink and good counsel will amend. For give the dry fool drink. None is the fool not dry. <laughs> Bid the dishonest man mend himself. Then he be no longer dishonest. <laughs> Anything that is mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin, and sin that transgresses is but patched with virtue. <laughs> if that simple syllogism will serve, so. If it will not, what remedy? <laughs> As there is no true cuckold but calamity, so beauty's a flower. The lady bade you take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. Miss Prison, in the highest degree. Lady, cuculus non facit monicum. That's as much to say as I wear not motley on my brain. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. Make your proof. I must catechize you for it. Good my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for lack of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournst thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. <laughs> the more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the lady. <laughs> what think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for tuppence that you are no fool. <laughs> what say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship <laughs> takes pleasure in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. I protest, I take these wise men that crow so at these set kinds of fools, no better than the fool's zanies. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and a free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts, which you deem cannon bullets. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railings in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. <laughs> now, Mercury, and do thee with leasing, for thou speakst well of fools. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desire to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. This a fair young man and well attended. Oh, my people hold him in delay. Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Oh, fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Fie on him. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I'm sick or not at home, what you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old, and people dislike it. But you have spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whose skull drove crammed with brains, for here he comes, one of thy kin has a most weak peer martyr. By mine honor, half drunk. Who is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? It is a gentleman to get eh, a plague of these pickled herrings. 
How now, Sot? Good sir, too. Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery? I defy lechery. Uh, there's one of the gates. Aye, marry, what is he? No, let him be the devil and he will. I care not. Give me fate, say I. That is all one. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above heat makes him a fool. The second mads him, and a third drowns him. Go thou, and seek out the crowner, and let him sit, O oh my cuz. For he's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go, look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna. And the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow swears he'll speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes it upon himself to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. And he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench. But he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. What manner of man? Of very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what parentage and years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. As a squash is before it is a peas cod, or a codling when it is almost an apple. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man. He's very well favored and speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman! My lady calls. Come, give me my veil. We shall once more hear Orsino's embassy. The honorable lady of the house, which is she? Speak to me, I will answer for her. Your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty, I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I'm very comfortable, even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say a little more than I've studied, and that question's out of my part. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart. And yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear I'm not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain. If you are she, you do usurp yourself, for what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of oh, my message. Come to what's important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and it's poetical. It is the more like to be fiend. I pray you, keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not the time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No good, Swabber. I'm to hull here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant, sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I'm a messenger. Oh, surely you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it all is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full as peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? 
The rudeness that had appeared in me, I've learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Dear Lady Olivia. Oh, a comfortable doctrine and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I've read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Do you have any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look, sir, such a one I was this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in green, sir. Dwell into your wind and weather. It is beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you would leave these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out divers schedules of my beauty. It will be inventoried, and every particle and utensil labeled to my will as item. Two lips in different red. Item. Two gray eyes with lids to them. Item. One neck, one chin, and so forth. Will you sit hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are too proud. Oh. But if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompense, though you were crowned the non pareil of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, with fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your Lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Oh, I suppose I'm virtuous. Know him noble, of great estate, fresh in stainless youth. In voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in dimension in the shape of nature, a gracious person. But yet, I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's strife, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love and sing them loudly even to the dead of night. Hallow thy name to the reverberate hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare thee well. I thank you for your pains. Here, spend this for me. I'm no feet post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love makes his heart a flint that you should love. And let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I'm a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, face, limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. No, <laughs> not too fast. Soft, soft. <clears throat> Unless the master were the man, how now? Even so quickly might one catch the plague. 
Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio! Here, madame, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left his ring behind him. Would I or not? Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord or hold him up with hopes. I'm not for him. If that the youth may come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hi, thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. Oh, I do, I know not what, and fair to find. Mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate shall thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is the creed must be, and be this so. Will you stay no longer? No, will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you of your leave that you may leave me to bear my evils alone. If it were a bad recompense of your love to any of them on you. Well, let me yet know whether you are bound. No suit, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. But I do perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I call Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Metzli, whom I know you've heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had so pleased with me, it so ended. But you, sir, alter that. For some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea, was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, sir. Though it said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. But though I cannot with such estimable wonder over far believe that, Yet thus far I must boldly publish her. She bore mine that envy could not but call fair. She's drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good, Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is kill him whom you have recovered. Desire it not. Fear you well at once. My bosom is full of kindness, and I'm yet so near the manners of my mother, that upon the least occasion more mine eyes will tell tales of me. I am bound to the Count of Sino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with you. I have many enemies in Arsino's court, else I would very soon see thee there. But Come what may, I do adore thee so. The danger may seem sport, and I will go. We're not you even now with the Countess Olivia. Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, have I since arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it yourself. She adds, moreover, that you put your lord into a desperate assurance that she will none of him. And one thing more, that you never be so hardy to come again in his affairs unless it be to report his taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me. I'll none of it. Come, sir. You peevishly threw it to her, and it is her will that it be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. 
What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much me thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak in starts distractedly. She loves me. Sure, the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring? Why, he sent her none. I am the man. If it be so as this, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art a wickedness wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy it is for the proper falls in women's waxen hearts to set their forms. Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we, for such that we are made of, such we be. How will this fudge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? I say, a man, my state is desperate for my master's love. I say, a woman, now a last today, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? O oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Abroad, Sir Andrew. Not to be abed after midnight is to be up betimes. The Lucanos are gathered, thou knowest. By my throat, I know not, but I do know to be up late is to be up late. <laughs> A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfair kind. To be up after midnight and to go to bed that is early. So that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. That's not our life consists of the four elements. Faith, so they say, but I think it rather consists of Eating and drinking! <laughs> <laughs> Thou art a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Aye! Marion, I say, a stoop of wine. <clears throat> oh, here comes the fool in faith. <laughs> How now, my heart? Did you never see the picture of we three? <laughs> Welcome, us. Let's have a catch. Oh, by my troth, the fool has an excellent breast. I rather than for a shilling, I had such a leg, and so, so sweet a breast to sing as the fool has. Oh, a suit? Thou was in gracious fooling last night when thou spokest of pigrogrammatus of vapians passing equinoctial of cubus. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good in faith. I give thee sixpence for thy limon, that's it. I did in petticoats thy gratility, for Malvolio's nose is no whipstock. My lady has a wise hand, and the myrmidons are no bottle ale houses. <laughs> <laughs> Why, this is the best fooling when all is said and done. <laughs> now, let's, let's have a song. Here's sixpence for thee. Uh, let's have a song. <laughs> and here's a testrel of me, too. Ooh. If one night give, another night Would should. you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song, a love song. Aye, aye. We care not for good life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stand here, your true love's coming that can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting, journeys end in lovers' meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Good, excellent in faith. What oh, is God. love? Tis not hereafter. Oh, present mirth had present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no plenty. Come and kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth's a stuff will not endure. Excellent! A mellifluous voice, as I am a true knight. 
A contagious breath. Ah, very sweet and contagious in faith. <laughs> to her by the nose is dulcet and contagion. But shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse up the night owl in a catch that will draw three souls out of one weaver? Shall we do that? Well, you love me. Let's do it. I'm a dog at catch. <laughs> By a lady, sir, and some dogs will catch well. Oh, most certain. <laughs> now let our catch be thou knave. Hold thou peace, thou knave. Knight, I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave, knight. This is not the first time I've constrained one to call me knave. Now begin, fool. Uh, begin, hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> <laughs> Good and fate, come on, begin. Hold thy peace, thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou name. Hold thy peace, thou name. Hold thy peace, hold thy peace, thou name. What a cut of walling do you keep here? If my lady have not called upon her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My ladies, a Catayan, <laughs> we are politicians. Malvolio is a pegger, Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> Three merry men be we. Three merry men be we. Three merry men. Three merry men. Three merry men be we. Three merry men be we. Am I not consanguineous? Am I not of our blood? Tilly Valley lady. There was a man in Babylon. Lady, lady. Beshrew me, the knight's in admirable fooling. Aye, he, he does it well enough if be disposed, and so do I too. He does it with a better grace, <laughs> but I do it more natural. <laughs> <laughs> On the 12th day of December, the 12th day of December, we the day of Are you mad or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, no honesty, but a gamble like tinkers at this time of night? Do you make an alehouse of my lady's house that you squeak your cozier's catches without any mitigation or remorse of boys? Is there no respect of persons, place, nor time in you? We did keep our time in our catches, sir. Snack up. <laughs> so, Toby. I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it will please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear hearts, for I needs must be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. <laughs> His eyes do show his days are almost it's done. even so. But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. Shall I bid him go? What then if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare not? Oh, no, 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 you dare not. Out of tune, sir. You lie out any more than a may stir. Does that thing because they are virtuous? that there shall be no more cakes and ale. <laughs> By Saint Anne, and ginger shall be hot in the mouth too. Thou art in the right. Go, sir, rub your chains with crumbs. A stove of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, had you prized my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means to this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Go shake your ears. Hmm. There's good a deed as to drink when a man's hungry, to challenge him to feel, and then break promise with him, and then make a fool of him. <laughs> Do it now, I'll write you a challenge. I'll deliver your challenge by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the cows were today with my lady, she is much out of quiet. Mm. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. 
If I do not go him into a neighborhood and make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. Possess us. I know I can do it. Possess us, possess us. Tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he's kind of a Puritan. Oh, if I think that, I'll beat him like a dog. Why, for being a Puritan? Thy exquisite reasons, sir knight. I have not exquisite reasons, but I have reasons good enough. The devil. A Puritan that he is, writing constantly but a time pleaser, an affectionate ass that can't stay without books, and I just did my great swats. The best persuaded of himself, so crowned that he thinks with excellencies, it is his ground to fail to all that look at him love him. And on that vice in him, will my revenge find notable cause to work. What will what? you do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love. Wherein, by the color of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady, your niece, on a forgotten matter. We can hardly make distinctions of our hands. I smell a device, <laughs> and I have it in my nose, too. He will think by the letters that thou will drop that my niece is in love with him. My purpose <laughs> is indeed a horse of that color. Uh, and your horse now will make an ass of him. <laughs> ass, I doubt not. Oh, this would be admirable. What royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. I will plant you to one. Make a fool a turn where he shall find this letter. Observe his construction of it. For this the night to bed and dream on this event. Farewell. Good night, Penticilia. <laughs> Before me, she's a good wench. Ah, beagle purebred, and wonders adores me. What's the but of that? I was adored once too, you know. Thou need send for more money, knight. And if it cannot recover your knees, I'm a foul way out. Send for money, knight. If the hats are not to the end, call me cut. And if I do not do it, never trust me. <sighs> Take it how you will. Oh, that's the bad night. I go burn some sack. It is too late to go to bed now. Come, knight, come. Give me some music. Good morrow, friends. Oh, good Cesario. But that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, we thought it did relieve my passion much, more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy paced times. Uh, come with one verse. He is not here, so please, your lordship, that you sing it. Who was it? First to the jester, my lord, a fool that Lady Olivia's father had taken much delight in. He's about the house. Go seek him out and play the tune a while. Come here, the boy. If ever thou shalt love, and the sweet pangs of it remember me, for such as I am all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How does thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Ah, thou speak masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye had stayed upon some favor that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. Ah, what kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. Oh, she's not worthy, then. What years in faith? About your years, my lord. Too old by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. 
So where is she to him? So sway she levels in her husband's heart. <laughs> For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are. Alas, they that are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come. The, the song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones do use to chant it. It is silly sued and dallies in the innocence of love like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Aye, pretty. Sing. Come away, come away, dear. And in sad cypress let me be lame. Fly away, fly away, breath. I am slain by a fair cruel maid. My shroud of white stock all with you. Oh, prepare it, my part of death, no one so true did share it. Not a flower, not a flower sweet, on my black coffin let there be strown. Not a friend, not a friend greet, my poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand, thousand sighs to save, lay me away. Sad true lover, never find my grave to weep there. Here is for thy pains. No pain, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I pay thee for thy pleasure, then. And pleasure will be paid, one time or another. <laughs> Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy gods protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea, that their business be everywhere, and their intent everything, for that's it that makes a good voyage of nothing. Farewell. Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love more noble than the world, prizes not in quantity of dirty lands, the parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her. Tell her I hold as giddily as fortune, but tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in, attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Soothe, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, had for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, you tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can buy the beating of so strong a passion as love that give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much, they lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite, no motion in the liver but the palate that suffers surfeit, cloyment, and revolt but mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they're as true as heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man as it might be, perhaps. Were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love. But let concealment like a worm in the bud feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was this not love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will. For still we prove much in our vows, yet little in our love. And thy thy sister of her love, my boy? I'm all the daughters in my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste, and give her this jewel. 
Say, my love can give no place, but no denay. Come thy way, Senor Fabian. Ah, uh, come. Near, thy ways. Near, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldn't you like to see the niggardly, rascally sheep biter come to some notable shame? I would exult, man. You know, he brought me out a favor with my lady about a beer baiting here. And to anger him, we'll have the beer again. <laughs> and we'll fool him black and blue. Shall we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not. Pity of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Get you all three into the box suit. Malvolio's coming down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. <laughs> Observe him, for the love of mockery. For I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close in the name of Justin. Lie thou, dear, for here comes a trout that must be caught with tickling. Tis but fortune, all is fortune. <laughs> Maria once told me that she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near, that should she fancy, it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? Here's an overweening rogue. <laughs> oh, peace. Contemplation makes a real turkey cock of him. Oh, he jets under his advanced plumes. I could so be the rogue. Peace, peace I Count say. Malvolio. <laughs> oh, rogue. Oh, pistol him, pistol him. There is peace, example peace. for it. The lady of the Strachy married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Oh, fire him, Jezebel. Oh, peace, peace. Now he's deeply in luck. How imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. <laughs> oh, for a storm boat to hit him in the eye. Calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left <laughs> Olivia sleeping. <laughs> Fire and brimstone. Oh, peace, peace. <laughs> and then to have the humor of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would, they should do theirs, to call for my kinsman, Toby. Bones and shackles. Oh, peace, peace, now, <laughs> Seven no. of my people with an obedient start make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind up my watch or play with my... some rich... Jewel. Toby approaches dead, cut seats to me. Shall this fellow live? Do our silence be drawn from us with cars yet peace? I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does not Toby take a blow to the lips then, young? Saying, cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your knees, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. I know it was, for many do call me fool. Whose employment have we here? Ah, now the woodcock is near the gin. Oh, peace and the spirits of you must intimate, reading aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very seas, her use a tease, and thus she makes a great. Please, <laughs> it is in contemptuous question, her hand. Her C's or use or T's, why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes, her very freezes by your leave wax, soft. <gasps> and the impression of her lucrecy with which she uses a seal. This my lady, to whom should this be? Ah, this wins him, live her and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. What follows? The number's altered. No man must know if this should be the Marlboro Leo. Hurry, come, deep. <laughs> I make command where I adore, but silence like a lucrecy knife. With bloodless stroke, my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Ah, Faustian riddle. 
excellent wench, I say. M O A I dot sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see. Let me see, let me see. Ah, what dish of poison has she dressed him? And with what wing does Daniel checks at it? I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me. I serve her, she is my lady. This is evident to any formal capacity. There is no obstruction in it. And at the end, what should that alphabetical position pretend? If I could make this resemble something in me, softly, M-O-A-I. Oh, I make that up. He's at a cold scent now. All sort of a cry upon it for all this, though it be as rank as a fox. M, Malvolio, M, why that begins my name? Did I not say that he would work it out? It call his excellent at fault. M, but there's no consonancy in the sequel that suffers on the probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. All right, cudgel him and you make him cry O. Oh. And then I comes behind. Aye, and you had an eye behind you, you might see more detractions <sighs> at your heels rather than fortunes before you. M-O-A-I. This simulation is not as a former, and yet it would bow to me, for every one of these letters is in my name. Soft, here follows prose. <clears throat> if this fall into thy hand revolve, in my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh. Be opposite with the kinsmen, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross guarded. I say remember, go to. Thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a fellow of servants and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee. <laughs> the fortunate unhappy. <laughs> Daylight and Campion discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point the wise, the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me, for every reason excites me to this. That my lady loves me. She did commend thy yellow stockings of late. She did praise my legs being cross-guarded. And in this, she manifests herself to my love. And with a sort of injunction drives me to habits of her liking. I thank my stars. I am happy. I will be short, stout, in yellow stockings and cross guarded, even with the swiftness of putting on. Jove and my stars be praised. Here is a postscript. Thou canst not choose, but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile. Dear my sweet, I pray thee, Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything that thou wilt have me. I will smile. <laughs> I will not give my part of this sport for a pension of thousands to be paid from the Sophie. I could marry this wench for this device. <laughs> oh, so could I too. <laughs> and ask her no other diary but at such another jest. Or nor do I. Ah, here comes my noble girl catcher. Will you lay your foot upon my neck? And mine either. Set my freedom a tear trip <laughs> and become thy born slave. And faith in mine either. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, why, you put him in such a dream. Yes, yes, put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must go mad. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, but say true, does it work upon him? Oh, I, like Aquavita I to a midwife. <laughs> <laughs> if you will then see the fruits of this sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings. This a color she abhors. And cross garter, the fashion she detests. And he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as it is, that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tarto, thou excellent devil of a wit. I could make one too. Save thee, friend, in thy music. Dost thou live by thy tabor? No, sir. I live by the church. Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house. And my house doth stand by the church. <laughs> so thou mayst say that the king lies by a beggar if the beggar dwell near him. Or the church stands by thy tabor if thy tabor stand by the church. You have said, sir, to see this age. A sentence is but a chevron glove to a good wit. How quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Nay, that's certain. They that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would therefore my sister had had no name, sir. Why, man? Why, her name's a word, and to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. But indeed, words are very rascal since bonds disgrace them. Thy reason, man? Troth. I can yield you none without words, and words have grown so false, I am loath to prove reason with them. I warrant thou art a merry fellow and carest for nothing. Not so, sir. I do care for something. But in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. <laughs> if that be to care for nothing, sir, I would it would make you invisible. <laughs> are thou not the Lady Olivia's fool? No, sir. The Lady Olivia has no fool. She will keep no fool until she be married. And fools are as like husbands as pilchers are to herrings. The husband's the bigger. <laughs> no, I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. I saw thee late at the Count Arsino's. Foolery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but the fool should be as oft with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and thou pass upon me. I'll no more with thee. Hold. There's expenses for thee. <laughs> now, Jove, it is next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. <laughs> By my throat, I'll tell you, I'm almost sick for one. <laughs> Though I would not have it grow on my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bred, sir? Yes, being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia, sir, to bring a Cressida to this Chilus. I understand you, sir. <laughs> Tis well begged. <laughs> I am afraid the matter is indeed not great, sir. Begging. But a beggar. Cressida was a beggar. My lady is within, sir. I will constant to them whence you come. Who you are and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but this word is overworn. <laughs> This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of wit. He must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of the person and the time, and like the haggard, check at every feather that comes before his eyes. This is a practice as full as, of labor as a wise man's art, for folly that he wisely shows his fit. But wise men, folly fallen, quite taint their wit. God save thee, gentlemen. And you, sir? The Oval God, monsieur. At vous sorci, votre servitor. I hope you are, sir, as I'm yours. Will you encounter the house, sir? My lady is desirous that you enter if your trade be with her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, <laughs> she is the list of my voyage. Well, then, taste your legs, sir. Put them in motion. 
My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will answer you with gate and entrance, but we are prevented. Most excellent accomplished lady, may the heavens rain orders on you. The you to record here, rain orders well. <laughs> My mother hath no voice, lady, but your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Order, pregnant, vouchsafe, I get them all three already. <laughs> Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant? Tis never merry world since lowly feeling was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino youth. And he is yours. And his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts were they were blanks, rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts in his behalf. Oh, no, by your leave, I pray thee. I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I'd rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear Lady Olivia, oh, oh give me leave, I beseech thee. I did send after the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you. Under your hard construction must I sit, to force that on you in a shameful cunning, which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tyrannous heart can think? To one of your receiving, enough has been shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hides my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree of love. No, not a grace, for it is a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Why then, methinks, it's time to smile again. <laughs> oh, world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. Fear not, good youth, I will not have you. Oh, the clock abrades me for the waste of time. And yet, when wit and youth are come to harvest, your wife shall reap a proper man. There lies your way, due west. Then westward ho. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You nothing, madam, to my lord by me? No. Oh, stay, I pray thee. Tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then you think right. I am not what I am. I wish you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderer's guilt shows not itself more soon than a love that would seem hid loves night as noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood on a truth, and everything I love thee so, that mug all thy pride, nor wit nor reason shall my passion hide. Extort not thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause. But rather, reason thus with reason fetter, Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. You know, Cesario, I was thinking perhaps... By my innocence, I swear, and by my truth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none shall be mistress of it. And so, adieu, good madam, 
Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. And yet, come again tomorrow. For perhaps thou mayst move that heart which now abhors to like thy love. No, faith, I'll not see a jot longer. Thy reasons, dear Venom, give thy reasons. You must needs yield your reasons, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your knees do more favor with the Kong servant man than she ever bestowed upon me. I saw it from the orchard. Did she see thee the wild old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I can see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. Slight! Will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. And they have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. Hmm. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to awaken your dormant valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should have accosted her and with some excellent jest, fire new from the mint. You should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, and this was balked. You, the, the double guilt of this opportunity you let time wash off, and you are now sailing to the north of my lady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard, unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valor or policy. It be any way, it must be with valor, for policy I hate. I had as leave be a groundless as a politician. Why then? Build me thy fortunes on the basis of valor. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. My niece will take note. And assure thyself, there is no love broke in the world that can more prevail in commendation of man with woman than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will any of you bear me a challenge to him? Go. Write it in a martial and be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and full of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. And if thou dowest him some trice, it shall not be amiss. And as many lies as may lie in thy sheet of paper, though the sheet be big enough to cover the bed of wear in England, set him down. Go on about it. Let there be gall in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen. Go! Where shall I find you? We shall call thee at the cubicolo. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. Oh, he has been very dear to me there, boy. Some mm. 2,000 strong or so. Ah. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you will not deliver it? <laughs> Never trust me then. And by all means, stir on the youth and answer. I think oxen and whale rope cannot hail them together. And for Andrew, if he were open and you find so much blood in his liver that can clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> and his opposite, the youth. Bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. <laughs> ah, comes my youngest friend. If you desire the spleen, mm -hmm. I will laugh yourself into stitches. Follow me. <laughs> Young old Mabel, you must hurt me. A very renegado, for there is no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly could ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He is in yellow stockings. And those doctors? <laughs> Most villainously, like a pen that kicked the school in a church. <laughs> I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter that I dropped to betray him. Mm. He does smile his face into more lines than in the new map of the augmentation of the Indies. You have not seen such a thing as this. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him. And if she'll do, he'll smile. And take it as a great favor. Bus, come, bring us, bring us where he is. <laughs> I would not by my will have troubled you. But since you make your pleasures of your pains, I will no further chide you. 
I could not stay behind you. My desire more sharp than fire it still did spur me forth. I not all love to see you, though as much as would have drawn one to a longer voyage, being but jealousy what may befall your travel, being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger unguided and unfriended often prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love, though rather by these arguments of fear set forth in your pursuits. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer me but thanks, and thanks, never thanks, and all good turns are shuffled off at such in current pay. But where my work is, is my conscience firm, you should find better dealing with it. What's to do? Shall we go to see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. I am not weary, and it's long tonight. I pray you. Let us satisfy our eyes with the things of fame and memorials that do renown this city. Would you pardon me, sir? I do not walk these streets without danger. Once in a sea fight against the Count, his galleys, I did some service of such note indeed that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. Belike you slew great number of his people? The offense is not of such a bloody nature, albeit. The quality and time of quarrel might as well given us a bloody argument. It may have since been answered in repaying what we have stolen from them, which for traffic's sake most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which if I be lapsed in this place I shall pay dear. Do not then walk too open. It ought not fit me, sir. But hold, here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak of her dire clause you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with the viewing of the town. There you shall have me. Why I, your horse bearer? Well, happily your eye shall light upon some toy that you have desired to purchase, and your store, I think, is not for an idle market, sir. I'll be your horse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant? I do remember. I've sent after him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is bought more oft than begged or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where is Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant of my fortune. Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He sure is possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best if you had some guard among you if he come, for sure the man is tainted in his wits. Go, call him hither. I'm as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. <clears throat> How now, Malvolio? Sweet lady. <laughs> Smilest thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad, lady? I could be sad. This does cause some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering. But what of that? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true swan it is. Please one, please all. Why? How dost thou, man? What's the with thee. Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. It did come to his hands, and commands shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed? I, sweetheart, I come to thee. Oh! <laughs> God comfort thee. Why dost thou smile and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? At your request, yes, nightingales and sedors. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness, t'was well writ. What meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Some were born great, <laughs> some achieve greatness. What says thou? And some have greatness. Oh! The bundle. Heavens restore! Thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings? And wish to see thee cross gartered. Cross gartered? Go to, thou art made if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a sword still. Oh, this is very midsummer madness. <laughs> 
Madam, the young gentleman of the Count Orsinos is returned. I could hardly entreat him. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I will come to him. Good Maria, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I will not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh, do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose that I may appear opposite for him, for she incites me to that in the letter. Cast thy humble slough, says she. Be opposite with the kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang with arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity, and consequently, found the manner how as a sad face. A reverend carriage, a slow town of some sir of note, and so forth. I have limed her, <laughs> but it is Job's doing, and Job make me thankful. <laughs> and when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to, not Malvolio nor after my degree, but <laughs> fellow. Why, everything adheres together that no drum of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance, what can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospects of my hope. Well, Jove, not I, is the door of this, and he is to be thanked. <laughs> Where is he in the name of sanctity? If all the devils of hell be brought in little, and legion himself possess him, yet I will speak to him. Here he is, here he is. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? Go off, I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go off! Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did I not tell you? Sir Toby, my lady, prays you take a care of him. Aha, does she so? Oh. Ah, pretty peace, peace. Like, do not think this. I will deal with alone. How is it with you, Malvolio? How dost thou do? Why, man, defy the devil. Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Lie you. And you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it by heart. <sighs> Pray God he be not bewitched. Ah, carry his water to the wise woman. Marry, and it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord! Ah, oh, pretty peace, peace. Go to, go to. This is not the way. We must deal gently with him. Leave me alone with him. Ah, no way but gentleness. Gently, gently. The fiend is rough and will not be roughly used. How oh, now, my Borcock? How dost thou chat, sir? I bid he covet me. Why, man, tis not for gravity to play a cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, foul collier. Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, Minx. No, I warrant you. He will not hear of God. Go yet. hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> 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 is it possible? If this were played upon the stage now, I would condemn it as an improbable His fiction. His very <laughs> genius has taken infection of the device, man. Nay, pursue him now. Let the device take air and taste. Ah, why? This would make him mad indeed. The house will be quieter. <laughs> come, come. We have him in a dark room and bound. Mm -hmm. My niece is already in the belief that he is mad. We may carry it us for our pleasure and his penance. Till our pastimes, tired and out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on him. At which time, we bring the device to bar. 
and crown thee for finder of madmen. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but see. Ah, more matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Is it so saucy? Aye, it is. I warrant him. Ah, do but read. Give me. Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Hmm, a good note that keeps you from the blow of the law. Wonder not, nor admire in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I have showed thee no reason for it. Mm. Thou comes to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly. But thou liest in thy throat. That mm. is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief and to exceed in good sense, less. I will weigh Lady going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me. Mm, good. Thou killst me like a rogue and a villain. Ah, keeps you on the windy side of the law. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better. So look to thyself, thy friend as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Aguecheek. If this letter moves him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. You may have very fit occasion for it. He's now in some commerce with my lady, and by and by will depart. Go, Sir Andrew. Scalp me for him at the end of the orchard like a bum baby. And soon as thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear terrible. For it comes to pass on that the horrible oath in a swaggering accent sharply twanged off gives man more approbation than ever proof itself could have earned him. Nay, let me alone for swearing. Now will I not deliver this letter, for the behavior of the young gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece confirm no less. And this letter, this letter, being so excellently ignorant, will breed no terror in the youth. He'll find it comes from a clod ball. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. I will set up an Andrew A. Uchik, a notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman, as I know his youth will aptly receive it, in the most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will so fright them both that they will kill each other by the look, like cockatrices. Mm. <laughs> ah, here he comes with your niece. Give them way till he take leave and presently after him. I meditate a while upon a horrid answer for this challenge. I've said too much upon a heart of stone, mm. and laid mine honor to uncharry on it. There is something in me that reproves my fault. But such a headstrong, potent fault it is, that it but mocks reproof. With the same behavior that your passion bears, goes on my master's grief. Here. Wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech thee, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny? That honor saved may upon asking give. Nothing but this, your true love for my master. Oh, how with mine honor may I give to him that which I have given you? I will acquit you. Well then, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. God save thee, gentlemen. 
And you, sir? That defense thou hast, betake thee to it. Of what nature the quarrels are that thou hast with him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, and bloody as a hunter, attends thee at the orchard's end. Dismount thy tuck, be here in thy defense, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I'm sure no man hath any quarrel to me. My remembrance is very free and clear of any image of offense done to any man. You shall find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, be taken to your guard, for your opposite hat in him, what skill, youth, strength, rage, and impetuosity can furnish man withal. I pray you, sir, what is he? Oh, he is night dove, with unhatched rapier and on carpet consideration. But in private brawl, he's the very devil, bodies and souls that he divorced three. And his incessment at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulcher. Hope no business word, give it or take it. I'll return into the house again and desire some conduct of the lady. I'm no fighter. I've heard of some kinds of men that purposely put quarrels on others to taste their valor. Be like this is a man of that quirk. No, sir. Indignation, his indignation derives itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore, on and give him his satisfaction. Back you shall not to the house, unless you attend that with me, which with as much safety you might answer him. Therefore on, or strip your sword stark naked, for meddle you must, that is certain, or forswear to wear iron about you. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, sir, do me this courteous office as to know of the night what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Senor Fabian, come stay here with this gentleman till I return. I pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incense against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, sir, what manner of man is he? Hmm, nothing of that wonderful promise. To read him by his form as you are like to find in him the proof of his valor. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite you could have possibly found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that had rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my metal. Ah. Why, man, he's the very devil. I have never seen such a farrago. I had a pass with him. Rapier, scabbard, and all. And he gives me the stocking with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. And on the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet hit the ground they step on. I hear he's been offensive to the Sophie. Oh, pox on it. I'll not meddle with him. Aye, but he'll not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him down yonder. Oh, plague on it. I thought he'd been so valiant and so cunning in fence. I'd have seen him down here, I would challenge him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my harsh grey couplet. Mm. I make the motion. Stay here and put a good show on it. This shall end without perdition of souls. Mary, <laughs> I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. <laughs> He's brought his horse to take up the challenge. I've convinced him that he's a devil. Ah, he is as horribly conceited of him and pants and looks pale as if a bear were at his heels. Mm -hmm. There is no remedy, sir. The gentleman will fight with you for oath's sake. Murray, he had better be taught his quarrel and now finds that not so much worth talking of. So draw in supportance of his vow. He promises he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Ah, give him ground if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew. 
The gentleman for oath's sake will have one bout with you. He cannot by the duello avoid it. So come on to it. He swears as a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on to it. Play God, he keep his oath. I do assure you, sir, it is against my will. Put up your sword. If this young gentleman has done you offense, I take the fault on me. But if you offend him, I for him defy you. Why, what are you? One said that for his love days to do more than you've heard him brought to you, he will. And you be an undertaker. I'm for you. Ah, Paul Sir Toby, here comes the officers. I'll be with you and none. Pray, sir, put up your sword if you please. I will lie you, sir. And I promise you I'd be as good as my word. He bears easily and reigns well. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Arsino. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir, no, Joss. I know your favor well, though know you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you. There is no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do? Now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. It grieves me more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness that you have showed me, heart being prompted by your present trouble, out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold, here's half my coffer. Do you deny me now? Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, unless it makes me so and so the matter so by those kindnesses I have done for you. I know of none. Nor know I you by voice or any teacher. I hate ingratitude in man, more than lying, vainness, babbling, drunkenness, or any taint of vice whose strong corruption inhabits our frail blood. Oh, heavens themselves! Come, oh, sir, I pray you go. Let me speak a little. This youth you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death. Relieved him with such sanctity of love and to his image which me taught and promise most venerable word than I devotion. And what's that to us? Huh? Time goes by away. But oh, how vile an idol proves this God. Thou, Sebastian, has done good feature shame. In nature, there is no blemish but the mind. And none can be called the form but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauteous evils are empty trunks overflashed by the devil. The man grows mad, aware of him. Come, sir. Leave me on. Methinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself, so do not I. Prove true imagination, or prove true, that I, dear brother, now be taken for you. Come hither, Sir Knight, come hither, Fabian. We shall whisper over a couplet of some say saws. He named Sebastian. I, my brother, know yet living in my glass. Even such and so in favor was my brother. And went he still in this fashion, color, ornament, for him I imitate. Oh, if it proves tempest are kind and salt ways fresh in love. A poultry and dishonest boy, more a coward than a hare, his dishonesty shows in leaving his friend in his necessity and denying him. And as for his coward ship, ask Fabian. Hmm, a coward? A most devout coward. Ooh, religious in it. Oh, sled. I'll after him again and beat him. I do punch him soundly, but do not draw thy sword. And I do not. Ah, come, let's see the event. Hmm. I'll lay any money on it. Well, be nothing yet.
Will you make me believe that I am not sent for you? Go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow, let me be clear of thee! I held out in faith. No, I do not know you. Nor am I bid by my lady to bid you come speak with her. Nor your name is not Master Cesario. Nor this is not mine knows neither, and nothing that is so is so. I pray thee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent my folly? He has heard this word of some great man, and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly. I am afraid this great lover the world would prove a cockney. I prithee, unguard thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I pray thee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. If you tarry any longer, I shall give you worse payment. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report. After fourteen years' purchase, <laughs> So, sir, we meet again. Now, there is for thee. Why, there is for thee. And there, and there. Are oh. all the people mad? Hold, sir, or I'll throw your dagger over the house. This I will tell my lady straight. I will not be in some and of sir. your coats for tuppence. Oh. Nay, let him alone, sir, Toby. I'll find another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him if there be any law in Illyria. Though I struck him first, yet there's no matter for that. Then go thy hand. Come, I will not let thee go. Thou art well flesh, my young soldier, put up thy hand. I will be free from thee, if you dare accept me for the draw thy sword. What? Nay, then. I'll have some of this malapur blood from you. Hold, Sir Toby, hold. On thy life I charge thee, hold. Madam? Will it be ever thus? Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves where manners never were preached. Out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesario. Roots be begone! I pray thee, gentle friend. Let thy wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house, and hear thou there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, so that thou mayest smile at this. You shall not choose, but go. Do not deny. Beshrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee. What relish is this? How runs the stream? Or that I am mad? Or else this is a dream? Oh, let fancy still my sense and let it steep. Yet if it be thus a dream, let me sleep. Nay, come, I pray thee, but thou's to be rude by me. Oh, madam, I will. Oh, say so and so be. Nay, I pray thee, put on this beard and this gown. Make him believe thou art Sir Topas the curate. Do it quickly. I'll call Sir Toby the Wells. Well, I'll put it on. I will dissemble myself in it. I would I were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. I am not quite tall enough to become the function well, nor lean enough to be thought a good student. But to be said an honest man and a good housekeeper goes as fairly as to say a careful man and a great scholar. The competitors enter. Don't bless thee, Master Parson. Bonus dear, Sir Toby. <laughs> <laughs> For as the old hermit of Prague, who never saw pen and ink, very wittily said to a niece of King Gorbaduck, that that is, is. So I being Master Parson, am Master Parson, for what is that but that, and is but is. <laughs> to him, Sir Topas. Ah. What ho, I say, peace in this prison. Ah, the knave counterfeits well. Good knave. Who calls there? 
Sir Topus the Curate, who comes to visit Malvolio the Lunatic. Sir Topus, Sir Topus, good Sir Topus, go to my lady. Out, hyperbolical fiend! How vexes me this man! Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? Well said, Master Parson. Sir Topus, never was man thus wronged. Good Sir Topus, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fie on thee, dishonest Satan! I call thee by the most modest terms, for I am one of those good ones, who will use the devil himself with courtesy. Sayest thou that house is dark? As hell, Sir Topus. Why, it hath bay windows, transparent as barricados, and the clerestries towards the south north are as lustrous as ebony, and yet complainest thou of obstruction? I am not mad, Sir Topus. I say to you this house is dark. Madman, thou errest! There is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. I say this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell. And I say there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wildfowl? That the soul of our grandam might happily inhabit a bird? And what thinkest thou of this opinion? I think nobly of the soul, and in no way approve his opinion. Fairly well, remain thou still in darkness. <laughs> thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, or I will allow of thy wits, and fear to kill a woodcock, lest thou dispossess the soul of thy grandam. Fare thee well! Sir Topus! <laughs> Sir Topus! My most exquisite Sir Topus! Nay, I am for all waters. Thou may have done this without beard and gown. He sees thee not. Hmm. To him in thine own voice, and bring me word how thou findest him. I would he were well rid of this knavery. If he could be conveniently delivered, I would he were. For now I am so far in offence with my niece, hmm. that I can no longer with any safety pursue this sportly upshot. Come to my chambers by and by. Hey Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how my lady does. Fool! My lady is unkind. Purdy? Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say! She loves another! Who calls her? Good fool, as ever thou will deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? Aye, good fool. Alas, sir, how fell you besides your five wits? Fool, there was never man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well you are, then you are mad indeed, if you be no better in your wits than a fool. <laughs> they have here propertied me, keep me in darkness, send ministers to me asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. Shh, advise you, sir. What you say, the ministers are here. <gasps> Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy vain bibble babble. Sir Tovis. And you, sir, maintain no words with him. Who, I, sir? Not I, sir. God by you, Sir Topus. Marry, amen. I will, sir, I will. Fool, 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 I say. Alas, sir, what say you? I am shent for speaking with you. Good fool. Help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee, I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am, good fool. Some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee ever more than the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it, but tell me this indeed. Are you mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not, I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. <laughs> I will help you. I will fetch you light, and paper, and ink. Fool, I'll requite it in the highest degree. I pray thee, be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir. I'll be with you again. In a trice, like to the old vice, your need to sustain. 
who with dagger of lath in his rage and his wrath cries aha to the devil like a mad lad pare thy nails dad adieu good man devil adieu good man devil adieu good man devil this is the heir that is the glorious sun this pearl she gave me i do feel it and see it and though this wand and rouse me thus it is not madness where is antonio then i could not find him at the elephant yet there he wasn't there i found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out his counsel now might do me golden service for though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness. Yet though this flood of accident and fortune so far exceed all instance, all the scores, that I am ready to distress mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. Yet if it were so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs with such smooth, discreet, stable bearing, as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, come with me and with this holy man into the chantry by. There, before him, and under that consecrated roof, fight me the full assurance of your faith, so that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it. Whilst you are willing, it shall come to note what time we will our celebration keep, according to my birth. What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you. For having sworn truth, ever will be true. Well, lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. This is to give a dog, and in recompense, desire my dog again. Belong you to the lady Olivia, friends? Aye, sir. We are some of her trappings. Oh, I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Marry, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly that I am an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends, I am abused. So that, conclusions to be as kisses, if your four negatives make your two affirmatives, why then, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Why, this is excellent. Why, my truth, sir, no. Though it please you to be one of my friends. Thou shalt not be the worse for me, here is gold. But that it would be double dealing, sir, I would you could make it another. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once, and let your flesh and blood obey it. Well, I would be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. Here's another. Primo, secundo, tertio's a good play. The old saying is, sir, the third pays for all. The triplic, sir, is a good tripping measure, or the bells of St. Bennet put you in mind. One, two, three. You can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you will, let your lady know I'm here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Marry, sir, I'll abide to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir. But I would not have you to think that my desire of having is the sin of covetousness. But as you said, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I will wake it anon. Mm. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well, yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared, as black as Vulcan in a smoke of war, a bobbling vessel was he the captain of, for shallow draughts and bulk unprizable, with which such skateful grapple did he make, 
with the most noble bottom of our fleet. That very envy and tongue of laws cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and a fraud from Candy. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Out in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private brabble did we apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what it was but distraction. Notable pirate, thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness has brought thee to their mercies, whom thou in terms so bloody and so dear had made thine enemies. Orsino, noble duke, be pleased that I shake off those terms you give me. Antonio Neviet was thief, not pirate, though I confess on basin ground in a Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, from the rude seas and rage and foamy mouth that I redeem. A rock past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did there to add my love, without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the dangers of this adverse town. True to defend him when he was beset, while being apprehended his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance. And while one would wink, denied me of my own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before. No interim, not a minute's vacancy. Both day and night did we keep company. <laughs> Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. To thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth had tended upon me. We'll more of that anon. Take him aside. What would my lord but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me, madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario, good my lord? My lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be all to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to my hair as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What, the perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest offerings have breathed out, that ever devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even what it please my lord that shall become him. Why should I not? Had I the heart to do it, like to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love? A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But tell me this, since you to none regard and scarce my fate, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me for my true place in your favor. Live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tend dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits, crowned in his master's spite. Come away with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb I do love to spite the raven's heart within a dove. And I must jocund apt and willingly to do you rest a thousand deaths with thine. Where goes Cesario? After him I love more than I love these eyes more than my life. More by all mores than ever I shall love wife. If I do feign, you witnesses above, punish my life for tainting of my love. Hi me, detested. Oh, how I am beguiled. Who does beguile you? Who does you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away! Where's my lord? Cesario, husband! Stay. Husband? Ay, my lord, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband, Sarah. No, my lord, not Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario. Take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and thou art as great as that thou fearest. Oh, welcome, Holy Father. Father, I charge thee here by thy reverence, here to unfold what lately we intend to keep in darkness, what occasion now reveals before it is ripe. But thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. 
a contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, attested by the holy close of lips, strengthened by interchangement of rings. All this ceremony in this compact, sealed in my institution by my testimony, since when my watch had told me, toward my grave, I had traveled but two hours. Thou dissembling cub, what will thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case? Or will not else thy craft so quickly grow, that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell, and take her, but direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. Hold, little faith. Though thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, help a surgeon. Send one for Sir Toby presently. Oh, what's the matter? Has broken my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody cockscomb too. Oh, for the love of God, your help. I rather than for to burn her at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, Juan Cesario. Oh, we took him for we took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman Cesario. I. Odds lifelings. There he is. Oh, oh, you broke my head for nothing, and that that I did, it was to taunt to do my sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I be spake you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb be hurt, then you hurt me. You said nothing but a bloody coxcomb. Here comes Sir Toby Halton. He will tell you more. If he hadn't been in drinks, he would have tickled you on against than he did. How now, gentlemen? How is it with you? Uh, it's all one. Has hurt me, and that's the end of it. Sot, did see the surgeon Sot? Oh, he's drunk. Sir Toby, an hour ago, his mm -hmm. eyes were set at eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue and a passy measure pattern. I hate a drunken rogue. Oh, away with them who have done this, Abba! I, I'll help you, Sir Toby. We'll be dressed together. Will you help me? A knave, a thin-faced knave, an acid, a gull. Oh, get him to bed, and let his heart be looked to. I am sorry, madam. I've hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less at wit and safety. You threw a stranger guard upon me, and by that I do perceive it had offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other so late ago. One face, Gorgeous. one voice, one habit, two persons, a natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio? Oh, my dear Antonio, how have you always racked and tortured since I've lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fear as thou that, Antonio. How have you made the vision of yourself? An apple cleft in two is no more twin than these supertures. Which is Sebastian? Almost wonderful. <laughs> Do I stand there? I never had a brother, nor that deity in my nature. For there and everywhere I had a sister, of whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Of Messaline. Sebastian was my father. Such a Sebastian was my brother too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. <laughs> a spirit I am indeed. But am I of that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate? I should let my tear fall upon my cheek and say thrice. Welcome, drunken Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine and died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered 13 years. Oh, that record lives lively in my soul. He finished it indeed, his mortal act. That day made my sister 13 years. If nothing lets to make us both happy, but this my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me until each circumstance of place, time, fortune, 
two coherent jump that I am Viola. Which to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lies my maiden's weave. By whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrence of my fortune since had been between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady. You have been mistook. But nature to her by is due in that. You would have been contracted to a maid. Nor are, we, nor are you daring by my life deceived. You are betrothed to a maid and man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seem true. I shall have shared in this most happy rack. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and all those swearings keep us true in soul as though the orbit continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that first brought me on shore hath my maid's garments. He, upon some action, is now endurance at Malvolio's suit, a gentleman and follower of my lady's. He shall enlarge him. And yet, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor man, he's much distract. A most extracting frenzy of mine own, for my remembrance clearly banished his. How does he, sirrah? Truly, madame, he holds Beelzebub at the stave's end, as well as a man in his case may do. Does he writ you a letter? <laughs> I should have given it to you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when they are delivered. Open it and read it. Look to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. By the Lord, How madam! How now? Art thou mad? No, I do but read madness, and the lady shall have it as it ought to be. You must allow what? I pray thee, read it in thy right wits. But to read it in thy right, in, in thy right wits is to read it thus. Therefore, prepare my princess and give ear. Give it to Sir Fabian. Read it to you, Sirrah. <clears throat> by the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet I have the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used Malfolio. Did he write this? Aye, madame. The savor is not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian. Bring him hither. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on. To think me as well a sister as a wife. Some day she'll crown the alliance on it. There at my house and at my proper cost, so please you. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you and for your service done him, so much against the metal of your sex and so far beneath your soft and tender breathing. And since you called me master for so long, here's my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister? You are she. <laughs> <clears throat> Is this the madman? I, my lord, the same. How now, Malvolio? Lady, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or phrase, or say it is not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then, and tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you give me such clear lights of favor. Bad me come smiling and cross garter to you, to put on yellow stockings, and to frown on to Toby and the light of people, and, Acting this in an obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be imprisoned? Kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious geck and gull that our invention played on. Tell me why! Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess much like the character, but out of question. Tis Maria's hand. And now I remember me, 
It was she first told me thou wast mad. Then camest in smiling in such forms which here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. Pray thee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and the orders of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Mm -hmm. uh, good madam, hear me speak. Go ahead. And let no quarrel nor no brawl to come. Tain the condition of this present hour, which I've wondered at, in, in hope it shall not. Most freely I confess, myself and Sir Toby set this device against Malvolio here. Upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Maria read the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he had married her. How with a sportful malice it was followed, rather, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge. If that the injuries be justly weighed, then on both sides have passed. Alas, poor fool, how they have baffled thee. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. <laughs> I was once sir, in this interlude, once her topus, but that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember? Madam, oh, I laugh you at such a barren rascal, and you smile not, he's gagged. And thus, the willing of time brings in its revenges. <laughs> I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. Oh, he's been most notoriously abused. Uh, pursue him and entreat him to a peace. He had not told us about the captain yet, and that is known in golden time convince a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come, for so you shall be while you're a man. And when in other habits you're seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. When that I was, and a little tiny boy, with a hey-ho, the wind and the rain. A foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain, it raineth every day. A great while ago, the world begun, with a hey-ho, the wind and the rain. But that's all one, our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day.